Thank you. Hi, my name's Melissa and I'm part of the Making Space for Nature team. Um, this project came about from Cornwall Council's really ambitious 2015 environmental growth strategy which put the environment and wildlife at the heart of a 50-year vision for growth in, in the county. Since then, of course, we've had the 2019 um, Climate and Ecological Emergency Declaration and this has added a real sense of urgency to what we're doing in this project. The project's funded by the European Regional <laughs> Development Agency um, together with match funding from Cornwall Council and um, the University of Exeter. We're really pleased to be working with the Environment and Sustainability Institute there and part of their work is to measure the environmental and social impacts of this project. We're in the second phase of a six-year project um, which runs until December 2022 um, and that brings in an investment of £6.6 .6 million pounds, um, working in 14 towns across Cornwall um, delivering approximately 75 hectares of improved urban green space. Um, we're working with Cormac to deliver the project um, and together with them, right from the outset, it's been experimenting and learning as we go, um, trying out some really innovative methods for habitat creation. The project is all about bringing nature back into our towns and creating some fantastic green infrastructure, um, providing wildlife corridors and stepping stones for nature to move back in. We're working in everyday spaces, um, parks, wooded areas like this one, um, closed churchyards and cemeteries, road verges and edges to sports fields. Um, the project has very simple, clear goals. Um, number one, it's all about biodiversity, um, packing in loads of planting and habitats into places that are often starting out as just mown grass which we sometimes call a sort of green desert because it's so lacking in value for nature. Um, we're, we've created a really wonderful plant palette um, working with our county ecologist and with CEC, which is part of Cornwall Wildlife Trust. And the habitats that we're creating and enhancing include um, wildflower patches, wetland areas, loads of native woodland and tree planting um, so that also includes beautiful blossom and fruit trees um, that will give us fruits in years to come. Um, the planting and these habitats introduce huge amounts of ecosystem services. This is all about what nature does for us without us perhaps realising. It's all about carbon capture which is super important. Um, it's giving us more flood resilient landscapes, improving our soils, our air quality and of course all those health and well-being benefits that we all enjoy. Um, the project also looks at access improvements. As well as bringing nature into our towns, we want to really invite more people to enjoy these spaces. So it's very simple things like really robust seating to offer somewhere comfortable to pause and take in all this lovely nature. Um, it could be some pathways and signs to allow you to uh, understand a bit more about the wildlife that you're seeing on your doorstep. We're looking at offering um, community engagement with a lovely range of activities, uh, opportunities for volunteering, gardening, um, getting creative outside um, and just taking it in and taking a moment to enjoy these places and I think we've all found that really important over the last year. Um, I'd now like to hand you over to Charlotte who's going to tell us a bit more about why this project really matters. Thanks. As a society we're increasingly aware that spending time in nature and connecting with the wider environment is really important to both our physical and mental well-being. With reports that 75% of people value nature more now than they did before, the pandemic has shone a light 
on how vital access to urban green space really is. And with a growing body of evidence that biodiversity is a good measure of the quality of these urban green spaces, it correlates well with higher reported positive health and well-being. Recent research has shown that people who spend just two hours a week in nature consistently report more positive mood than people who spend less time. And researchers from Exeter University Medical School tested this relationship to show that it's not just a case of happier people moving to areas with more nature around them, it's actually the nature that makes us happier and healthier. There are so many ways that connecting with nature can help us live a more healthy lifestyle. Proximity to an inviting green space gives us more opportunity for outdoor physical activity. Urban green spaces are social venues, helping us keep connected and avoid loneliness. Observing and learning about nature helps us to keep our mind active and taking time to relax in a natural environment has a calming influence on us, helping us lower our stress levels. Increased green infrastructure also helps address issues that can drive poor health, like noise and air pollution. And many of the activities that we can do outdoors, like growing flowers, tending for animals, and even activities like litter picking, are us caring for the natural world, which helps remind us how we need to care for ourselves. Indeed, Cornwall Council recognises the link between a healthy environment and healthy people, stating in its environmental growth strategy that Cornwall's environment will be naturally diverse, beautiful and healthy, supporting a thriving society, prosperous economy and an abundance of wildlife by the year 2065. Making space for nature is helping achieve this vision by creating vibrant biodiverse spaces within our urban areas, increasing opportunities for enjoyment of those spaces to happen more regularly and for longer. By bringing a richer natural environment into urban communities, we are helping overcome the obstacles such as lack of time, the cost and difficulty of travel that exclude people from contact with nature if it's too far away. We select our sites considering factors like whether they are on a route to school, whether they're part of an active travel network and the size of the population that lives there, so that closeness to a higher quality natural environment can become integrated into people's everyday lives. And importantly, we consult residents on the design concepts that we create, helping to build in a sense of connection and stewardship for the enhancements made to the sites early on in the process. But achieving this gain for our natural environment requires us to reverse some challenging trends impacting on the wildlife around us. The 2020 State of Nature report for Cornwall emphasises the challenges faced by Cornwall's natural environment. The report shows that since the early 1980s, nearly half of terrestrial mammals are found in fewer places in Cornwall. Nearly half of our breeding birds have declined and three-fifths of our butterflies are now found in fewer places. The main driver for this decline is habitat change and whilst plant and animal populations have felt the pinch, in the last 20 years the human population of Cornwall has risen by 12%. But it doesn't have to be this way and providing space for nature in our urban environments will be key to overcoming this challenge. Making space for nature is helping to develop strategies and practices for biodiversity gain to be designed into Cornish urban spaces. In fact, many pollinators, and bumblebees in particular, are now faring better in urban habitats than in the countryside, benefiting from the diversity of plants found in lots of different patches of parks and gardens compared to large areas of monoculture on farmland. We know that biodiversity gains can be made, even within relatively modest spaces, by implementing features that don't take up space, but make the space more multifunctional for people and wildlife. Just one example of this is looking at our planting in terms of extending the flowering season, providing forage for a wider range of pollinators, whilst also adding to the colour and interest of a site to encourage people 
out into it at different times of year. And with a projected 20% growth in the number of households in Cornwall by 2040, these types of changes are a really positive message for people and wildlife. So it's brilliant. So Melissa and uh, Charlotte have explained the rationale behind the project and why we're doing it and the importance of various elements of health, well-being, wildlife. But the reality is that what we've actually been doing is actually we've been on the ground in seven towns and we're actually going to be delivering all these interventions um, before the end of next year, 2022. So the first town that we've been in is Falmouth and we've done three spaces there in Falmouth so far, got another one to come. Uh, we have done the Beacon Park which uh, has got the best views in Falmouth I think, uh, Lounge Lane Estate so it's really nice to work in a housing estate and we've also done Traganiggy Woodlands which is actually where we are now so we were very lucky to be able to replace some of this Cornish hedge um, and hopefully we'll do a bit more over the coming months. We then, we've also been in Launceston, so uh, over in Launceston there's a fabulous uh, place called Windmill Hill, it's got some woodlands, it's got some pollinator friendly planting and again some sensational views out over Dartmoor, so really really lovely space. Uh, also done another housing estate there um, called the Ridge Grove Estate, so again we've put some lovely bulbs in there to brighten people's days up in the morning and keep the, the wildlife pollinators happy. Uh, we have one more space to do uh, which is a brand new space where there's going to be a footbridge going over the River Tamar. Uh, moving to Liscard we have are in the middle of finishing off Castle Park which will be a transformational project there for sure and uh, have done St Martin's Churchyard and one final space which is Lanchard Woods. Uh, a lovely piece of woodland with another stream running through it and we've made that run better and, and helped people to actually walk through it in a, in a much safer safer way. The, the other town we're doing in this first bit of the section is in Newquay and we've done St Column Minor uh, recreation area so we've worked around the playground and actually improved the planting around there and given the kids something nice to look at and some orchard trees and a, a really sweet little space actually in a sort of um, housing area uh, on Tow and Blister Road so um, if, you've, if you're passing you probably didn't even know it was an open space but we've done some lovely works there and just improved it for people but left it so that they can still have picnics there. Uh, the final town that we've sort of done the works in um, is at St Austell so if you've been driving along the A391 and wonder what those beautiful wildflowers are that's down to us. Uh, so that's been a really successful project. We've had a lot of people commenting on, on how nice it is there. Uh, the other two spaces we've done in St Austell are Cemetery Park, which is the kind of the main park through the middle. You may know it under different names. And also the Meadows. So again, um, much more sort of local space uh, for people to go and, and benefit. So those are five towns that we've already done some work in. Uh, we've got two more to go. Uh, so starting in this autumn, we'll be moving into Bodmin. Um, we've got three spaces there. So watch this space for the spaces that we're going to be improving there. And same for Penryn. So we're currently in consultation in Penryn, probably doing three and maybe four spaces um, in Penryn. So we are really, really motoring through all of this. Uh, but that's just the start. So we've done lots of the planting and we now need people to go and visit. So now we've told you all about the project, we want to let you know how you can get involved. The first thing to look out for is a series of events that we'll have coming up this spring and summer. On the 14th of August at the Beacon Park in Falmouth, we've got a celebration of wildlife with representatives from a range of organisations that we collaborate with. If you want to find out more, and there are many more events that we'll be holding, please visit our page on the Let's Talk Cornwall website. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, so what we really, I've, I've been telling you all about the spaces that we've been doing, that we've already done. In The simplest thing you can do is actually go and visit one of those sites. Uh, you'll hopefully get loads of inspiration of what we can do, what we've done, and then you might even want to try it yourself. So for details of which sites to go and visit please can you have a look at our website which is the normal Cornwall website with forward slash space for nature and if you'd like to try some pollinator friendly gardening in your own garden or local space um, why not try um, putting the mower away for a few weeks 
uh, we're coming up to the No Mo May time, which is um, celebrated by plant life. Um, and you can keep your edges tidy, maybe mow a path through it, but lo and behold, you'll have your own mini meadow in your own garden. And why not try sowing some seeds? It's a great time to get planting now. Um, a few um, annual flower seeds, um, things like cosmos, nasturtiums, absolutely fantastic for pollinators. Um, if you'd like to try and grow some herbs, most of those are brilliant for us to eat and enjoy, but also they offer amazing flowers for pollinators right through the summer. We'd love you to um, get in touch with us. We've told you about our project um, and we'd love to hear what you think of it or if, you, if you'd like to get involved. Um, we are at Space for Nature at cornwall.gov.uk. Thanks very much.